Hi everyone, it's Jen. Uh, today is just about nine months post up and I got a little present from uh, physical therapy today that I wanted to share with you because it's really bothering me and I'm gonna rip them off soon and I wanted to make sure that I kept this for uh, prosperity um, before I take them off. Um, I am gonna show you a little, little bit of cleavage today because of the tape I have on that's driving me absolutely bonkers. Um, but let me fill you in real quick. What I'm gonna focus on today is like physical stuff of like where I am, because it's been nine months and you know, it's a long time. Um, it's like having a baby, but not uh, kind of the opposite when it comes to hormones. Um, but I purposely wanted to fill you in on like where I am with like parts, um, especially if you like rewind or if you've just come out of surgery or something and you know, you're wondering Again, everybody's different, but you're wondering like, you know, what can you expect? Or if you just got frozen shoulder and you're like, oh my God, I can't move my arms. How long do I have to have T-Rex arms for? There's a billion things that can be in your space. Um, so sharing where I am right now, um, again, you can rewind to watch old vlogs about my frozen shoulder. Um, I've been in PT since October. Uh, it's now May. So it's been quite a bit, seven months of physical therapy. And I'll be in physical therapy for quite some time. So um, what's changed is that uh, last week I went to see my uh, breast surgeon. Haven't seen her since the day after surgery. So she took a look at the ladies. Um, I am having more ownership over them than I did before. And it was interesting just for me how much I've come more to acceptance with my boobs than I thought I was and a big step is even just calling them my boobs because I didn't consider these my boobs before um for me these are like it's my skin and there's an implant underneath there's no breast tissue uh so quick recap if you're just like tuning in for the first time ever I was diagnosed with breast cancer in July of last year it is now May of the following year um I had a double mastectomy uh this will help you too with the physical stuff, but I had a three and a half centimeter tumor here. I had another that was malignant. I had another malignant tumor closer to my nipple. Um, it was my choice whether I wanted to have both breasts removed or just my right one. And the percentage of having the cancer come back in my left breast was just too high for me. Um, so I uh, chose to have them both removed. And when they had the pathology come back on my left side, it turned out that I had lobular carcinoma on my left side so I was glad that I had it removed um because like lo and behold uh I, I don't think they consider lobular carcinoma and honestly I can't remember if it was in situ or invasive which is awful like I feel like I should know that but a it's like 10 o'clock or 10 30 at night I should be getting ready for bed and I'm sweating and stuff but I just wanted to because of this damn tape and I need to get it off before I go to bed <laughs> it's like ah so anyway, um, after my breast surgery, you know, you keep your arms here while everything is healing. It takes a long time to heal. They say three to six months, then they say six to nine months, then they say 12 months, and they say 12 to 18 months. Just have patience, it's gonna be a while. So I am at nine months post-op right now. And a few months after my healing, um, on my right side, they took out six lymph nodes. I learned that you have 30 lymph nodes. I had six of them removed here. Um, none of them were cancerous, so nothing had spread. I had two removed here. So most of my action happened on this side, uh, which means I've had more problems with healing on this side. My left side is basically back to normal. I mean, a huge thing post mastectomy is like the ability to lift your arms above your head. Um, and and like grasp behind here like even with my right arm i wasn't able to do that with both my arms for quite some time that takes a long time to be able to do certain things um so you know be, be patient with yourself i was not um i'm still not i'm better but uh still not um okay so physical stuff as i'm looking at myself with this so i go through phases of hating my body and um, not feeling connected to it. Maybe that's partially why I wanted to do this vlog too, because like, um, granted my camera's a little bit, it's not perfectly level because it's on my bed right now. Um, but normally in a tank top, like, um, I think I look decent in a tank top. 
the goal with plastic surgery after you've had a with reconstruction after you've had a double mastectomy is not to get to perfection without anything on it's to get to what looks normal um with like a bra on and a shirt so being that I'm not wearing a bra right now, and this is what my boobs look like, like it's not too shabby. Um, I put on about 25 pounds since I started the medication for all of this garbage. I'm on tamoxifen, I'm on Lupron. I actually still have, for those of you that are curious, that red mark is from the Band-Aid by the way, but my Lupron injection was here. I have, my skin is very sensitive, so I still have two marks from the Band-Aids Actually, my Lupron was like a week ago, so you can see how sensitive my skin is. Um, I get my Lupron in my arm. From what I read from a lot of vlogs, they most people have it done in their butts. Um, it tends to hurt less, but I don't really have a problem with the Lupron uh, shot. I will probably put a thumbnail, because I asked you when I was there last week, if I could take a picture of the actual, like, the needle of like what Lupron looks like and she covered up part of it. I'm like, no, 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 I wanna see like the whole thing. So you can get that it does go from like here up to like here and she covered a lot of it with her hand, but I'll put it up on the Facebook page. Um, the Facebook page is also called Invasive Ductal Cursa What. Uh, so follow along if you wanna know about my journey. Um, honestly, I'm just getting sick of talking about all this stuff, but I had a good day at PT, so I wanted to share that and share about these lovely things that I'm gonna rip off as soon as I get off of the video. <laughs> so, where am I? So, um, I had a picture, well, actually, it's still on the Facebook page, where I, they, they told me after surgery that if you put a level on my boobs, it'd be level, and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. So I actually went home, uh, well, clearly went home, but shortly after surgery, in one of my vlogs, I feel like it was shortly after surgery, but I actually took a level from, <laughs> from my closet and put it up against my boobs. I think during one of the vlogs, the uh, I don't think it's a thumbnail, but I know the picture of it is on the Facebook page. So I put the level up like underneath <clears throat> and like, indeed they were level, which was interesting. So that's cool. I have a great plastic surgeon. Um, I'm not done with plastic surgery. Like this is not the final picture and I'll explain in a minute why. Um, but other fun fact to know is that um, my nipples couldn't be saved, so I don't have nipples right now. I was actually supposed to have the reconstruction or tattooing, how, whatever I choose. I was supposed to have that. I was supposed to, but like my last appointment with plastics, which was like two weeks ago, was like the time to decide like, do I want tattooing? Do I want the nipple reconstructed? What do I want to do? And truthfully, I'm not able to make that decision yet. So I said, let's hold off. I've had two surgeries in the past year, one clearly here, and then in my uterus too, which is a few vlogs ago, um, that was probably caused from the tamoxifen. My body's just had enough, so I need to just give my body a break. Um, so part of it is like, I'm sweating. I don't know if you can see on the back of my tank top, but as I go like this, like my back is sweating. It's 10.30 and um, this is what, um, I, I don't even know what to blame. I don't know if it's the tamoxifen, I don't know if it's the Lupron, whatever it is, but I start to sweat, or get hot, I should say, uh, come around like seven o'clock at night. Um, and I don't really have like night sweats, it's just like I'm hot all the time. Um, I could have the window open, it could be 30 degrees outside, but if there's, there's not like cold air like blowing into my face, it's just uncomfortable. If I press along here, <laughs> there's like sweat under my boobs. Like I'm just really, really hot and it's not hot in my apartment. Like I have my air conditioning on pretty low. Um, and like I said, I don't know what to blame for that. It's, I'm sure it's hormonal. Another thing that's hormonal is my belly. So a vulnerable moment, I'm not thrilled with my weight right now. Um, I know this sounds like body shaming, but I'm just not. Um, it's frustrating to put on weight and then like that much weight and then like none of your clothes fit and um, my belly changes so much. I mean, even literally from when I started this vlog, what, like nine minutes ago, my stomach was pretty flat. And as I'm talking, like, here we go, vulnerability. As I'm talking, like this part is just starting to like pop out and it's not, it's not based on food. I've gone through many checklists of what it could possibly be. I don't know what it is. It's not stress. 
I've read that like if the if the top part it's not from the ab it's not from my belly button down it's it's just this area right here just like out of nowhere will pop out and it'll look like I'm pregnant um, like right now it's sticking out more than my boobs are and I, I don't really understand why um, it could just be the changes in the hormones I took my tamoxifen about an hour ago who the hell knows but anyway that's that so my left arm is pretty much back to normal um, like I said, I can lift my arms up, you know, I can pretty much put my arm anywhere. And if you see, like, as I'm moving, um, if it looks weird, it's because I have those strap or the tape things on. But, like, I'm, I'm not doing this to be inappropriate. I'm doing this to, like, educate people so that they can understand what how all this stuff works. But if you look, like, when I lift my arm up, um, my boob just kind of naturally just goes with it. Um, yeah. My right arm, I got frozen shoulder, uh, not right away. It took a little bit for, I guess it was freezing over time from not using it and then got to a point that in PT, it just wasn't progressing anymore. So they gave me a, shot, a steroid shot in the back of my shoulder, which allowed me to do this and lift it up over my head and like have the ability to put it behind my back. I still, am, like even if you look here, it's not even with how... Like, I can lift my left arm up pretty high, but if I show you from the back, can you see that? Um, like, my left arm, I can go, like, all the way up here like normal. My right, I can get to about here, and then that's all I can do. Um, there's nothing wrong with my rotator cuff. There's nothing, uh, like, really wrong with anything. Nothing's broken or torn or whatever. It's frozen shoulder. It's gummy. It feels like someone took a humongous wad of, like, big league chew shoot it all up and like just shoved it underneath here. And the more things that I do, the more irritated it gets, and the more gummy it gets. So throughout the day, you know, in the morning, I'm able to do more with it than I can in the afternoon, which makes it complicated. I've gotten better figuring out my work situation because um, I type a lot. So I want, originally I had put um, like those pull out trays and I put my, my keyboard on there, like a wireless keyboard. And then I type, or not just type, but just do work at a, at a desk for like two hours. And then I, it would just, it would hurt so bad in here. My physical therapist told me to put um, my armrest on my chair because my normal chair didn't have armrests on it. It's just so I could sit up better and have better posture. But she said, you can't just have your arms just like hanging. You need to give it support. So I put the armrest back on there. Um, but it was bothering me a lot. So I've been really frustrated lately, just like not being able to do what I normally do in my everyday life, you know, like have my hair down and make it look pretty when I'm like sweating like a pig and I just throw it back and don't really care. Um, so I went into work um, like two weeks ago or something and I'm like, screw this. I, I unscrewed the pullout tray and I put my whole workstation back like what it used to be like before I had the surgery. And I don't know if my body's just used to it. I think there's a difference with the angle because now when I put my, um, when, I, when I type, I don't have the tray there, I'm up on a desk. So most of my weight is on my actual elbow and not like this part of my arm. And that seems to work better because like the other day I was working for like four and a half hours straight and didn't even realize that I had like been working that long. And my arm wasn't really bothering me that much. So that was phenomenal. But the frozen shoulder takes a long time for it to heal. Um, like I said, there were six lymph nodes taken out here. I understand now, I'm just starting to sweat. I understand now that the lymph nodes are not, um, I've talked in previous vlogs, like I have like certain indentations in places and I'm like, oh, maybe that's where she did the lymph nodes out. But it turns out that the lymph nodes are pretty deep into your skin, which I wasn't aware like how that worked. And that was part of why I requested to have an appointment with my plastic sur with my breast surgeon. Usually you wait a year out, which I didn't know. But I said, I just want to understand, like I've been to plastics a few times. Like I get, I understand more now about the whole implant part, but what I don't get is why all this is just still so tight beyond the frozen shoulder thing. And um, she explained to me that, like, my implants, by the way, are over the muscle. 
Um, I went direct to implant. I didn't have expanders. And um, I have just a ton of scar tissue. And it has to get broken up. So the frozen shoulder part, the shot helped tremendously. They're talking about doing another shot, but from the front, um, if they don't see like marked improvement and I go back in like a month or so, which is fine. Um, the shot doesn't really hurt. And it's amazing, like immediately after you have the shot, like you're able to do things with your arm. But again, like it's kind of re like it refreezes if you don't keep moving it, but when you move it, it hurts. And it's like a horrible relationship that the only way for it to heal is for it to hurt. <laughs> and that's where I am with this tape. So what I'll show you is um, uh, my implants, by the way, are 560 cc's, um, somewhat smaller than what they took out. But yet my cup size for my bra is substantially more than what it was before. I didn't want bigger boobs. I wanted it to be like pretty similar to what I had before. It's just that I'm 50 and like, you know, your boobs over time get like saggy and stuff. And now I have like implants that are like firmer and higher. So I go to put my bras on and it's like, no, no, no. I don't even know what size I am actually. I just know my old cups like don't fit at all. Like they come over here and they, just, they like stop here and it just doesn't work. So um, there are people, by the way, that specialize in post mastectomy bra fittings, just FYI. Uh, my plastic surgeon gave me the name of a woman who's in New Hampshire. So my to-do list is to call her to get fitted for like, like a real bra. Um, the things that I have right now are, I mean, they're bras, but they're not, they're like small, medium, large kind of bras. They're not like 38 C's or something like that. And they definitely don't clasp in the back. They just like slip on, slip off. So what you'll notice is um, like any, any inflammation that I had is like totally gone. None of that's a concern. But if you watch, and again, I'm doing this educationally, so just <laughs> go with it. But literally, if you put a level here, it would be, they would be the exact same, like, you know, they're, they're level. <laughs> it's not like one's bigger than the other. But if you watch them here, as I put my arms up, you'll see that my right side, like the whole thing kind of comes up with it. And the left side doesn't do that. So like I'm down here, I don't know if this is more helpful, and I lift my arms up and you see my right side goes up and my left side pretty much stays where it is. Like I go like this and the left side just pretty much stays. I go like this, my right side, I mean, you could see it here. This is the edge of the implant here. And you can see as I lift my arm up, like the whole thing just comes with it. So the work that I'm having done ugh, at PT right now is to loosen up. They're doing uh, myofascial work, which is great, but um, tough. And she's kind of like kneading in order to break up the frozen shoulder part, which is all like in here. And even under here, I still have like, it's, a lot of sensitivity, a lot of sensitivity. When I saw the breast surgeon, she was like poking around, like, how does this feel? How does this feel? And even though we're still wearing masks because of COVID, like you could see it in my eyes that I'm like just wincing and wherever she touched. But I've only had, I think three appointments now where she's done the myofascial work and I have seen large results from it from then. But I have to tell you, it hurts. It feels like she's just taking my skin and just pinching it hard, but that's not what she's doing. She's just like pushing it. And I don't know if you can tell, but like, I'm really red here. Um, again, when I get the hot flashes, which are more like half a day of being hot more than a flash, it's my face and it's my upper chest that just gets super hot. And what, it's not crazy hot when I touch it, but it just feels like it's on fire. Like for most of the day and it's really irritating. Um, but like I said, this is all, it's all scar tissue. So like, you know, you have the implant here. I have scar tissue under here. She said you can do, um, there's almost like a little flap, not flap, like little, like it looks like flab. It, it just it doesn't curve as nicely. And she said that's something easily they can fix um, by going back into um, like having my plastic surgeon fix all that. But like, if you look, I mean, it's high. Like my right side is still really high. My left side is not as high. I don't know if you can tell that at all. 
but the right side is pretty high. So when I lift my arm, it's like all that comes up with it and it's such a stretch and it's uncomfortable. Um, so she'll continue with the myofascial work to break up the scar tissue that's like, it's all around, it's all around here. Um, even underneath on my rib, this is where you'll see like my sweat marks from, <laughs> cause I'm hot. Um, even underneath by your rib, because like your boob is sitting on your rib, um, they don't hurt as much now, but uh, she is working on my ribs from the front and actually from the back too, just to loosen everything up. And then with the implant, um, I had Allogerm, which you can Google to find out more of that, but basically they take like a, Allogerm is made of, of human skin. There's no DNA in it, it's not like live skin. Um, although they do consider it an organ transplant, so if your insurance doesn't cover it right away, you just have to go through some like hoops, but they're supposed to cover it. Um, mine finally was covered within the past like month, and like I said, I'm like nine months post-op. They were saying that, you know, why would you have a, a, an organ transplant for re or reconstruction from a mastectomy? And it's like, it's not really, I mean, yes, skin is an organ, but it's not really an organ transplant. Anyhow, they use the allogerm to make like a sack sort of sling thing. I guess a sling is a better word. Under here, and then they basically like plop the implant in it and, and like sew it all in. So between the implant and the pectoral muscle is a very thin layer of skin. Um, and there's scar tissue there too. On the left side, like I said, like, yes, I'm sure there was some scar tissue, but I'm able to move stuff around and like, Woo, like this just moves naturally like a regular boob would. You can still tell it's an implant. I mean, I don't know. You, I mean, you can see it, like from here to here, it, it's not as natural as a regular boob would be, but this side looks way better than this one does. And it will just take time. Um, you can also, by the way, have fat grafting done where they take fat from your abs or your thighs and inject it in here to make that, uh, scoopy thing just look more natural so it's not like skin and then implants sticking out um but what i wanted to show you because <laughs> this was today at pt um and it's not like i'm being weird because i've had a bathing suit on that was low cut this is what i would look like anyway if you came across me at the beach or something but uh so when i was talked to my breast surgeon Part of the reason why I didn't want to have the nipples dealt with just yet is because my scars are still kind of, they're not dark, they're just, they're pink. Like they're not flesh toned yet. And I don't want to have like tattooing done on top of skin that's still very pink. I feel like I want to wait for it to heal longer so it's more flesh colored um, before she does anything else to irritate it. I know my own body at this point ridiculously well. And I know that like it just responds to stuff very easily. Like when I get flushed, like I'm really, really red. And like even from a stupid band-aid from a week ago, I still have marks on it. And I was pretty gentle with how I took it off. Um, so I said I wanted to wait on it. And she said um, that they have this, <laughs> the second time that I brought this up in a vlog. And I always leave a sheet in the other room. <laughs> they have this tape. Um, oh, it's like something silicone tape. That, that they put over your scar and it helps it to uh, to heal faster. It helps it to lighten up quicker. Um, anyway, so my breast surgeon told me about that. You can get off Amazon, it's like $13 or something. Um, and it just helps things heal quicker. I haven't ordered it yet um, for no reason at all. I just haven't. Uh, but when I went to PT, um, when I do the myofascial work, I'm in a room, like a closed off room, because obviously she's touching around here and we don't need the whole freaking place to see all that. Um, but she mentioned about putting um, this tape, which it, I can't remember what it's called, kinetic tape, kinesic tape, whatever. It's the kind of tape that you see like athletes wear. Um, <clears throat> I've had it on my shoulder in another vlog before where um, it's like a, it, I mean, it's a pretty thin tape. It's almost like a band-aid material, like a flexible band-aid material. But um, I had it once on my shoulder and when they when they put it on, basically like the goal is to increase blood flow to that area. So when she put it on my shoulder for the frozen shoulder, it helped to like, 
well, because it's sticky, you know, it, it, it adheres. So it helped to like constantly push my, my shoulder back. Oh, oh, ow. So I wasn't like hunching over and I, I'd have better posture, but it would help with the shoulder. Um, and it was uncomfortable because it's like every time you go do something and you get a little bit lazy, the tape is just like, rip, nope, it's supposed to be over there. And not painful, just like pulling a little bit. Um, but like if you ever, you know, watch sports and certain things and you see them having like, you know, orange tape on them or it comes in all sorts of colors, um, that's what it's for. So apparently you can put those on scars too. Um, my physical therapist said that she has a lot of uh, people, women mostly, who have scars from knee surgery and they want um, obviously the scar to get lighter because, you know, everyone can see and they want to have their scar not really be noticeable. Um, you have to be careful if you're going to be in the sun, but I don't plan on doing any like nude sunbathing <laughs> with no nipples anytime soon. <laughs> so like, obviously if you're, you know, if you have scars and you're in the sun, it's going to get darker, but I'm not putting these out in the sun anytime soon. So, um, yeah, so I haven't ordered the tape and she's like, well, I can just put some on now. And I'm like, I trust her. I'm like, okay, so here's where we are. So, <laughs> and, and I, I do this just to show you what it looks like. Like I said, like I have a bathing suit that goes down to here anyway. So it's like I'm showing you something I want to be showing if I were at the beach. But first of all, like I'm all sweaty here. It's just like I, I sweat and it's just really annoying. Um... But yeah, she she taped me in good there. So like it starts here and you could probably see it with the shirt and it goes to, I think it ends about here-ish. And same thing on this side. She just put it on, follows my scar and ends right about there. Um, so what happens, I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell, um, it increases blood flow to the area. So I see little like specks of red all around um, and it is like, you know, adhering. So like, it just doesn't, <laughs> it, it, it pulls a little bit at it, which I guess is what you want to have happen. But, um, the interesting thing is like, and this is the thing I think people, a lot of people don't understand and I didn't know going into it, but it's like, I wasn't going to have my boobs removed. Um, didn't really want to keep the cancer around. <laughs> so uh, I didn't realize that when you have a double mastectomy, like, your boobs are numb. It's, it's, you're basically having an amputation. You know, your boobs are being amputated and they're putting in a prosthesis, which is the implant. And then, you know, sewing you up when you're done. And part of the myofascial work is to get feeling back. And that's why it hurts because like you have to like re-stimulate those nerves in order to get blood flow going and to like wake everything up to be like, okay, let's start to have feeling here. So, that's why I mentioned like the having pain thing, which brings you good in a bizarre way that sounds so unhealthy. But like, you know, when she's taking this and she's grabbing at it and like it hurts so much, but A, she's loosening up all the gunk that's in here that's keeping my arm from moving like it should be. It's a whole range of motion thing. Um, oh, I was doing so well, just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, I don't usually vlog this late at night because I get like super tired after dinner. Um, oh. Anyway, yeah, it's it's like she she's pinching and she's she's well, she's not pinching. She's like basically pushing and sliding in order to get a feeling back. So I, oh god, that hurts. So I've noticed a tremendous difference since she started that. And like I said, it's only been I think three sessions that she's done the myofascial work. Um, it hurts while she's doing it. Uh, the first time, I don't know time-wise how long she was working on me, but I got super nauseous, like really, really nauseous. Um, like I felt like I was going to throw up and I, I vlogged about that. You can go back a couple of vlogs to, you know, to whatever. Um, but I got really, really, really nauseous and I was like down for the count for the day. I had to like work from the couch. I just, I couldn't get up. I thought I was going to hurl and I never did throw up. Then the second time that she did it, um, she worked on me for a shorter period of time and I was less nauseous. And um, I'm not nauseous now. If anything, I'm not nauseous. I think I'm distracted because of all the pulling uh, from all of this. But I think it's your body's response just to waking up all this stuff, you know, like, 
yeah, like the boob, the numb boob thing. Like I didn't know that that was a thing. Like I, or at least didn't expect to go nine months without like feeling my boobs. So, and and that's not the case for everyone. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's body reacts to all this differently. Um, but like I would like you know misjudge a wall or something and bang into it and like don't feel anything and like it's just weird walking around with these two things. I have, you know, I have feeling like. Let's see. Well, the exciting thing is now. Wow. <laughs> this is what makes me happy when why I do these vlogs. <sighs> the exciting thing is like, like I go down here to see like when I when when I stop feeling stuff and I'm going all the way down and I'm hitting the tape and I can feel everything from here down to the tape. And I swear to God, this morning, I couldn't feel that. But here, that's like, as I move over more, I can feel, 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 feel. But here, like right above the tape, it's numb. But still, I can feel that. Which is amazing, like, it's such a short period of time. But the tape is driving me nuts because it's, it's so much, like... You know, it's reawakening all of these nerves and all of this feeling that I haven't felt in nine months. And it's a lot for your body. So like, you know, every time I go to move, like I can feel the pulling and all of that. And maybe, I mean, I'll just try to go to sleep. And if I can sleep through it, I'll, I'll keep it on. I'm not supposed to keep this on longer than three days. Um, the silicone tape, I'm supposed to actually keep on like until it kind of gets gross and then you, and then you switch it. But she said that I should use that um, cumulatively for like six months or something. Um, and then I should see a stark difference. My PT also mentioned uh, a cream or ointment. I think it's a cream called uh, Mederma. Not Mederna. Mederma. Like derm, like skin. Which you can also put on to help with um, the scar you know, healing the scarring. But yeah, so the goal of this is to increase blood flow... That's so crazy that like I can feel that. That's ins that's insane. Like I could not feel that this morning. I even over here, like I can feel all of that. That's crazy. Like this, I, I can feel this, but it like it hurts on my right side. Like that's totally numb. Can't feel that, but here I can so weird just a short period of time so anyway this is what the tape looks like um obviously when it comes off i have to be ridiculously careful in peeling it off um you you almost like you know you just pull up a little bit of the corner and then you slowly pull your skin back as it's coming off because it's like ripping off a band-aid and it's like my freaking ass scars and lord knows i don't want them to be irritated by me taking this off um but i guess they're working because shit I can feel that and that's just amazing um but it's not enjoyable because like I can it's like all these parts of my body are like activated that that haven't been in so long and it's it's um it's overwhelming in like a I don't know a neurological way I guess to have all of that feeling um I've talked about other when I when I had worse side effects from the tamoxifen, Lupron, or the Zometa, I can't even keep track of what the hell it was, where I, I was having, and even right after surgery, I would have a f this feeling like I had like ants crawling like inside of me, um, which is all just nerve stuff going on. And it's almost like that's what it feels like, but the ants aren't like moving all over the place. It's like they're just kind of like they've got their armor on and they're just kind of hanging out and they want to go someplace, but there's just too many of them so they can't get anywhere. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but as I'm picturing what that looks like, that's exactly how I feel right now. So it's a matter of like how much can you power through and how much can you endure that? Because she was willing to like take this off before I even left PT. She's like, if you can't take it, just take it off. Like, don't need you to be a martyr with any of this. You have to be kind to your body. So I will try heading to sleep, see how I do. Um, I'm probably going to take Tex 
and jam him up super tight against my chest. Um, Tex is not a person, it's a taco. Uh, to help me sleep, so we'll see. My sleep has been super off. But yeah, I just wanted to show that to you. So um, things that I will say, super things that I'm proud of that I can do. First of all, like both my arms can go up and um, straight up. I've been doing more yoga, I've been walking more, but again, like you can totally see that. See how high my, oh, waving hurts. <laughs> see how high like this side is compared to the other side? It just looks freaky, but it won't stay that way. Like. When you first had the surgery done, like your boobs are pretty up high anyway, and it just takes time for them to drop. So like, just heads up, because when I was post-surgery and I'm like, my boobs are hard as a rock, you know, they're super high, like what the hell? It looked kind of cool to have super high boobs and a tank top, but um, was not comfortable like at all. And they were super hard and they're like, it will soften up over time. And now that it's been nine months, I can say like, they do soften up. Um, she actually encourages me <laughs> she made me put my hands on my boob today and like cup it um because like I don't feel like I don't find any sexuality in in this at all I I just don't um I I'm more at acceptance that these are my boobs now and trying to understand what they look like I will need to have stuff done reconstructive wise you can't tell as much now with the tape on um but the implant on this side just needs to get like shifted over a little bit. Um, most, I think it's like 20% of women, maybe more than that, um, after they have their initial reconstruction have to go back or choose to go back in to have like just some things like, you know, nipped and tucked, whatever, just so that it is appealing. And the nice thing, I guess, nice thing, that doesn't sound right, but when you have a double mastectomy because of breast cancer, insurance will cover plastic surgery after that. Because um, implants don't last forever either. Um, I still have yet to find out about this. These could last the rest of my life, but most likely after 10 years, we'll need to be switched out to a different implant. Um, and that's just like par for the course. But anyway, my, I mean, obviously you can see that my scars is here and my implant, um, the ripple of it is like right along here and it just gets uncomfortable. So basically what he would need to do is go in the same scar and like just like re-sew the implant over more towards the middle because with a rounded shirt like this, it's not a big deal, but you've seen in my other vlogs of mine where I wear V-necks, you know, the V is in one spot and my cleavage is like over a little bit. Nobody else would notice. I notice it. After all the stuff that I've been through, I deserve to have symmetrical boobs, you know? whatever. Um, so yeah, so he can do that with fat grafting, which I've heard pros and cons about. Um, obviously there's pros and cons with everything. Not that surgery is like my number one thing to go to, but I feel like that's what needs to be done is like, just like the implant just has to get like, just shift it over a little bit more and then, and then it'll be fine. Um, eventually I might want to have this fixed on this side because like on here, it's like nice and flat. Like my curve here is just gorgeous and I'm super happy with it. I have very minor scars here from where I had the drains. Um, they're fading. I don't care so much about them because if you have your arm down, no one's gonna see those scars anyway. Um, and like I said, they're pretty small, but still that area is sensitive. And this area is like super, super sensitive. And again, I have scarring here from my drain where they put the tube in for the drains, but it's not, it's not super bad. Um, it's just, you know, my regular scars from the mastectomy just go straight across. So that's where I am with the tape. Um, the thing I've heard that I'll just throw out there about the uh, fat grafting. Some people say that like when you have it, um, like, you know, you think, oh, you're having liposuction. It's just like saying like, oh, you got a boob job. No, I had implants put in, it's not a boob job. You don't lose feeling in your boobs when you have a boob job. Like you don't have, whatever, I can go on. I'm not, I'm gonna get off that soapbox pretty quickly, but a mastectomy is not a boob job um, by far. Like, yes, they're both implants, but I have no breast tissue. And I learned I will never need a, a mammogram ever again because I got no tissue to, to need one. None of this is breast tissue. It's so crazy. None of this is breast tissue. It is skin and implant, that's all. So there's no breast tissue. 
Um, don't need nanograms. Don't need ultrasounds. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess that's a perk. I don't know. Uh, what else? I, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I'm trying not to be as hard on myself about my body. Oh, the cupping thing with my hands. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, like, I try. They're like, you know, you should touch it so that you, you know, regain feeling in it. And that way you can, like, have more ownership over it. It's like having skin time with a baby or something. Like, I'll touch them, but they just, they feel external to me. It doesn't feel like it's part of my body. There's no sexual excitement here. And it's still really, really, really weird for me to not have a nipple. Um... I still don't know if I want one reconstructed because I've heard that they don't last, but they have 3D tattoos that last. And when it's cold outside, it's kind of cool not having nipples. But um, And the 3D t tattoos, by the way, I've seen pictures and they look, fun depending on who you go with, they look phenomenal. Like, looking at them, you would never even know that, that it's like a tattoo. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um... Yeah, so she said to, like, like cut my boob and, like, literally just, like, move it around to loosen up. I mean, obviously, you can see I can't really move it that much. But, like, touching it underneath my shirt so that, I'm on, so that I am skin on skin, so I bond with my foob, and just moving it around. You can't do this right after surgery, by the way, because all the shit needs to heal. So don't do this if you're, like two months out of surgery, whatever. That pocket, all that shit's got to heal. Let that have its time. I am nine months out, so I am good to do this. But, like, it's all just, like, stuck. So there's not a lot of movement I can do. Like, this side, and you can see there's, like, way more movement. I can, I can go left. I can go right. You know, I can go up and down, whatever. But it's just a matter of becoming comfortable with it and then moving it. Again, my left side's not so bad, but moving the right side just to break up that scar tissue because the only way it's going to break up is by movement. And while it's not the most fun thing to do, um, it's funny because you would think as a man you'd enjoy like taking a boob and just moving it around, but um, it is not a thing that I enjoy doing. And actually with the frozen shoulder, head of my arm this far back, as you can see, is not very comfortable. <laughs> um, so baby steps. So I'm going to stop there. It's going to go to sleep. Uh, yeah, and, I, and, I, and what I'll throw out there for to end on a positive note, I guess, is being kind to yourself. I've been in a very not good place for the past, I don't know, like especially like the past week. Just not wanting to do anything, like not finding joy in stuff. Like, I'm trying all different... The only thing that actually has been bringing me joy is painting the Kindness Rocks, truly. Um, if you don't know about the Kindness Rocks program, you can watch... <laughs> you can watch Neighbors to Know on YouTube. That was my talk show before all this stuff happened and I got distracted. I do eventually want to come back to it. I just can't right now. I have, like, three shows that were in the works that I was working on editing and um, obviously have to focus on this first before I get back to it. Uh, my last neighbors to know that I put up there, though, was an episode um, about the drains and how they work. Um, and that was kind of my coming out to that part of my life that, you know, this is what's going on with me. So have some patience, you know, while I work on, you know, healing me before I go back to introducing you to new people. But um, anyway, if you go to neighbors to know on YouTube... Uh, I did an episode with Angela Carpenter and Elena Pellegrino about how to make kindness rocks. And um, uh, it's just, it's very calming. I'm not really an artsy person, but um, I have a, a, I mentioned before, but random, I have a cyst on my hand. Um, I've, I've had so many random bizarre things pop up I think because of the meds, my body is just not liking the meds and it's doing these bizarre ass things. My heel has been killing me. I have to buy fucking orthotic shoes. Granted, they're actually very stylish shoes and you won't even know they're orthotic shoes <laughs> by looking at them. Um, but still, uh, my heel's been really bothering me. It's my Achilles tendon is like 
crazy tight. And again, tendonitis, side effect, tamoxifen. Um, anyway, I have a cyst in my hand, which is why it kind of been causing a problem. Maybe you could see it right there. It just, it hurts. And it's actually popping through on this side a little bit. And they said most likely it would just go away by itself. Um, but it's causing me not to be able to do certain things with my hand. Um, but having, you know, like all those little things, they just kind of pile up after a while. And I'm just like, you know, I can't, I, I was given strict instructions to not play video games on my phone because of the cyst, because I use this finger mostly on my phone. And you're like, they're like, you're overusing that finger. You have to give it a break. So I'm not typing with these two fingers and I'm a righty, <laughs> which is not the easiest thing. Um, yeah, so I'm like, what can I do? I can't go for a walk easily because my heel is killing me. So like, what am I supposed to do? So I, I got into Sandy Neck Beach. Um, again, this is also a few vlogs ago and gotten a ridiculous amount of rocks. And I've been slowly uh, painting them and putting them in like random spots or putting them in Kynos Rocks gardens. Um, and it's been calming because like painting is different. You don't have to hold it so tight that it would bother my the cyst in my hand. So that's something that I can do. So it's really thinking outside of the box as to what you can and what you can't do. And I'm trying to get back to my self, my new self, as much as I can. Um, it's hard, it's hard figuring out who you are. That's a whole other vlog. I'm not even gonna get into that right now because I'm still sorting it out. But what I will say from what I have to look forward to is it's going to be like stupid hot this weekend. It's only May and it's supposed to be like 95 degrees this weekend. So I bought a season pass to go kayaking for the summer. Um, I got gotten one last summer and had to stop kayaking um, right around the 4th of July because I was diagnosed July, what, 9th? And I had the biopsies done and I might have kayaked once after the biopsies, but I was so sore from the biopsies that it just hurt. And they're like, now there's really nothing, nothing I could do to br like break or hurt anything and movement is good. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to lift my body up off of a dock to get into a kayak. So I found a place um, where you get into the kayak from land and get pushed out. Um, and I don't know how my shoulders will do with the rowing. Um, it may be fine or with the cyst on my hand, I don't know. But they also have kayaks where you sit on top and um, pedal. Uh, I'm not sure. There's a rudder somehow in that concoction. I'm not, I'll have to learn how to do that. So I was not in a good place at all. Um, I'm thankful for the friends that reached out and that I spent some time with that just made me smile because um, it's been hard to feel like myself because I'm like, I don't even know who I am anymore. You know, I'm, I'm uneven boob gen, you know it's just it's it's tough it is a long process of healing a long process of healing and you just have to be patient with the whole process and you're you know you go through times of so much aloneness and pain and frustration just you gotta be patient that is my best advice just be patient and I know it's not easy but you have to be patient and know that like you know, look at what you can do today that you couldn't do yesterday. One small thing, you know, and it just makes a difference. Like I was able to touch this part of my boob and I can feel it. And that's really exciting. <laughs> it's like, look, I can feel it. It's almost like a pet. Look, I can feel it. I'll call it Rover. Maybe I'll name my, my boobs like Rover and Fido. Because I'm petting them and I can feel them just from this freaking tape. Well, I can on my left side. My right side, I can't feel once I get past here. All right. Anyway, talking too long, got to go to sleep. Um, be kind to yourself. Be patient if you've gone through this. And if you are a caregiver of someone who is going through all of this, you don't have to talk about cancer all the time. Just be there. You know, you don't have to say, like, how are you? Because sometimes that's a hard question to answer. You know, sometimes it just would be like, hey, you want to go see a movie? Hey, you want to go for a walk? Hey, you want to go grab a cup of coffee? 
or whatever. Send some stupid like meme or something, you know, whatever it is to get your mind off of stuff. After nine months, like I don't want to talk about cancer all the time. I don't. I don't know. All right, more to come eventually. I'll get there. Bye, everyone.